All right, everyone. Uh, I promised that I would do charcoaling videos and stuff. This is just a preliminary. I'm not going to show the charcoaling process in full. I'm just going to sort of explain the the method that I'm using again. Thanks to Robbie Bobby 24 over on uh, Twitter who showed me this method. I adapted it a little bit. Now here's the burn pit, of course, and there's yeah you know, various stuff. <laughs> Huge pile of firewood. That's uh, that's the charcoal and training there. Here's what I do, and again, it's an adaptation slightly. There's a smaller barrel in there, just a steel barrel. Um, if it's galvanized, you want to do a nice clean burn be before you make your charcoal, by the way. And then I've got a 55-gallon steel oil drum around it. And the reason why I have a barrel in barrel here is to reflect more heat back in, keep it more. It, it raises the efficiency marginally, and it's worth it over, you know, the 20, 30 burns I'm going to be doing. What you do is at the bottom... You, you can use a propellant like it should be something that's not going to contaminate the charcoal. So bacon drippings or something like that. Um, you put uh, like some cardboard, and paper bags, stuff like that in the middle and surround it with some twigs and smaller pieces of dry wood. It needs to be dry, uh, at least for the first couple of layers. It must be dry. And then you get it started. Once it's you know going fairly well, you put a swatch of like twigs and shit like this a couple good handfuls on top of it and you get it going and what you do is you wait until that's burning pretty well and starting to cinder and turn to ash then you put the next layer on um, again the second layer is going to be small stuff generally you don't have to there's multiple ways to do this this is just the method I'm using and uh, then I'll show you the charcoal that I've already created in three burns in a minute and so you just layer it up and you let that cinder then you start putting in the big stuff um, and you can use, you know, branches, you can use logs, you can split them up smaller, you can keep them larger. Uh, just make sure not to overcrowd the fire, because keep in mind only the top layer is getting oxygen at any uh, given time. And that's the point. With each layer that you raise it up, uh, the under layers are getting less and less air, and that creates pyrolysis. It just turns into charcoal. When I did it the other day, I had it heaped up a little bit out, and of course it compresses down at the end, you close it up. Um, I close it with both lids here. First lid goes on in the, uh, the where I'm creating the charcoal, weigh it down with a couple bricks to make sure that it's sealed more. And you're going to want to wear gloves or be really quick with that, by the way. And then I just put the top one on to stanch it out, keep even more air out, and uh, make absolutely sure that pyrolysis is happening. And what you end up with is charcoal. Um, it's not biochar yet, it's just charcoal. We'll explain that too in a minute. The top layer may not always completely carbonize. As you see here, this is this is charcoal. Uh, the center is still wood. It's, it's heated wood. This is great because from the top layer that didn't carbonize fully, that'll be great for like the third layer in the next burn because it'll ignite much more easily because, you know, it's partially charcoal anyway on the outside. Uh, it'll get going really nice, uh, nice clean burn, and then that will, will additionally carbonize. And so again, all of this wood, it's an entire cord, minus what I've already burned, and uh, pretty much all of this is going to become charcoal. It's enough for, again, I would say maybe 15, 20 loads, plus some that I'm holding aside for Hugel culture purposes. Now, there we go. By the way, it's about 50 degrees right now. I can smell the sniffy soil. Some random darts and shit there, and I'm going to show you the charcoal. Then we'll talk about how you turn it into biochar. It's uh, not that difficult, and there's some just randomly laying around here. Here you go. Look at that. That's from just three burns, and, you know, again, this is not necessarily the most efficient manner in which to do it. And using a, uh, an actual furnace system with the drum, you know, assuming that that drum wasn't falling apart, would actually be more efficient. This is all charcoal, and it's tinkly charcoal. You hear that slightly metallic sound, that's how you know that that's good. It's not the, uh, the really black, low-quality soft charcoal, it's, uh, it's better than that. And I believe that it'll last longer in the soil. What I'm going to do is uh, put this all in a container, along with all the other burns I'm doing. And in spring, uh, once it starts thawing out, because you don't want to do this in freezing weather, how you make biochar is simple. You simply flood it with water, 
after you've ground it up. I mean, I don't think it matters which way you do it. I think you can grind it first or after. It doesn't really matter. I'll probably grind it first into chunks the size of uh, anywhere from a BB to a pea stone. There'll be some powder, a few larger pieces. Then you flood it with water, and then you add fertilizer to it. Because what you don't want to do generally, uh, depending on what you're using it for, you don't want to just put this in the soil. For the entire growing season, it's going to be leaching nitrogen out of the soil. So you want to charge it with the nitrogen first so you can use it more quickly. And you can soak it for a few days to a few weeks. Um, you know, the suggestions vary. Um, the last time around when I was doing this, I added it directly to the soil, but that's because I also added a shit ton of compost and manure and stuff. That will balance, but it'll still be leaching nitrogen. It didn't seem to affect plant growth much, but it didn't boost it. So I'm going to charge this. I'm going to use a liquid fertilizer, organic of course, uh, something with a reasonable amount of nitrogen in it, like kelp meal or something. And I've got some Neptune's Harvest, uh, I've got some bone meal. Uh, I'm not going to use any inorganic fertilizers. In the past, I've sporadically used miracle Grow for a few purposes. I've decided to go completely organic for obvious reasons. And uh, this is sustainable. You're pumping a shit ton of CO2 into the soil. You're raising your crop yield. Um, you're creating a more biologically active soil with more microbes in it. Uh, of course, that's important, especially the nitrogen-fixing ones. Um, you can also do hugel culture. That's where you take just the wood, like is over there, and you pile it into the soil and cover it over with compost and sod and stuff like that, and you can grow things on that. It'll last 20 or so years. Biochar lasts longer. Once, it's, once this is charged and put in the soil, that improvement of the soil will last longer than my lifespan. That's a guarantee. It'll Because I don't do mechanical farming. Even with full-on mechanical farming, if you do biochar, like I'm making here, charge it, put it in the soil, it'll still be there for a decade or two. And that's with mechanical farming. So tilling it up every year with tractors and harvesters and all that shit. If you're doing it more by hand like I tend to do, uh, the only quick and easy thing I'm probably going to have to do in the spring is rent a rototiller for a day and get some beds done. Uh, it will last for decades and decades and decades. I mean, at the very least, I'll definitely look like a wizard by the time it's gone. By the way, look at those uh, lines there. Yeah, that's from mole activity. They're trying to get after my garlic. I didn't know that they uh, liked it. At least they're not vampire moles, though. Yeah, you can still see some garlic poking. I thought that was grass. It's actually garlic shoots. I've got to clear it out. It's a lot of fucking stuff to do in this garden. It's still half fallow, but uh, I got lots more done in the uh, autumn than I expected. So the expansion will definitely be a thing. It's just a matter of how much I expand it, basically, at this point. So yeah. Biochar. Three burns. And it requires very little maintenance. It's fun to burn things. Uh, manly activity and, you know, it's a cold day. You've got a fire going next to you. It's always more cozy. I can't wait. By the way, you're also increasing the value of the wood that you just bought because, um, I mean, this amount of charcoal alone, God, I don't know how much this would cost if it were bagged up and sold as lump for barbecue grilling or something. I don't know how much that would cost, but it would cost a lot more than the wood that I put into the fucking bin. That's about all. Peace out.